welcome to the encouraging word of today. Today is Monday, January the 11th, and we're going to start a brand new journey in a brand new book. As I believe this book uh, is is a is a mirror picture of what we're experiencing in America today. And except we do what God was calling for here in the book of Micah uh, by this wonderful prophet, uh, we we just may see the same demise. But I want you to listen to the word of God, Micah chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Micah, the Morsherite, in the days of Jotham and Ahaz and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear all you people, and hearken, O earth, and all that therein is, and let the Lord God be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place, and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. And the mountains shall be molten under him. And the valleys shall be cleft as wax before the fire. And as the waters that are poured down a steep place. For the transgressions of Jacob is all this. And for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Therefore I will make Samaria as a heap of the field and as the planting of a vineyard and I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley and I will discover the foundations thereof. And all the graven images shall therefore be beaten into pieces and all the hires therefore shall be burned with fire and all the idols therefore will I lay desolate for she gathered to uh, gathered it of her hire of a harlot, and they shall return to the hire of a harlot. Therefore I will wail and howl, and I, I will go strip naked. I will make wailing like the dragons in the morning of the owls, for her wound is incurable, for it has come up to Judah. He has even come up to the gate of my people, even Jerusalem. And so simply, here's what God is saying. He says, what is the transgression of, of, of um, Jacob? And um, is it not Samaria? And so what happened here is the kingdom split into two different powers, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Samaria was the southern kingdom. I mean, the northern kingdom of, of, of the nation of Israel. And, and, uh, and what they did was they went up there and they established themselves because they they did not agree with the southern kingdom of Jerusalem. And so they said, we don't agree with what you're doing and, and how you're worshiping, and we're going to go and do our own thing. Well, God doesn't allow us to just go do our own thing. God doesn't allow us to change where he's told us to worship or how he's told us to worship. He doesn't allow us to make up our own rules and regulations when it comes to the way we're supposed to live our lives and the sin that we're supposed to turn from and the life we're supposed to turn to. And so God says, hey, listen, if you choose to do things my way, then I will bless you and I will prosper you and I will keep you by my mighty hand and I will make my face to shine upon you. I will do all these things. But if you turn your face from me, you turn to this to the things of this world, and you turn to the gods of this world, then destruction will come upon you. I will not allow you to remain and defame my name. I will not allow you to continue to, to ruin my character, my purposes. And so God brings absolute total destruction to those who have those who do that. Well, we are supposed to be a nation that is lifted up on the name of God. Our money says, and God we trust, and yet we are slapping God in the face on a regular basis. And so therefore, God has brought us into this land just like he did Jerusalem. And 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 we started out really well and obeying and following those things and trying to live according to the principles of the Bible. But we have turned away from those things just like Jerusalem did. And we say, we want to worship you like we say. We want to live like we want to live. And, and we'll sprinkle in a little bit of your truths here and there. But but the reality is, is that we're going to live life and do, do um, um, worship the way we want to do it. And then, and 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 we'll we'll bring in the other gods around us as well, and we'll we'll say all, all things are all well. Well, they're not all well. We are very sick, and the transgressions that came upon uh, Samaria and the destruction that's come upon Samaria very well may fall upon our heads, except we repent and return, except we leave uh, our our sinful transgressions before the Lord God and 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 seek His face, as He says, "Her womb is incurable." Her wound is incurable. 
Uh, that's a terrible statement, but it is looking like our wound is incurable. And we're not seeing people banded together in prayer and seeking God's face and repenting. Even though maybe some of the sin is not committed by some of the people, the sin is, is projected over all the people because we're responsible for holding on to the truth. Not just to our rights, not just to um, who we are as Americans, but to who we are as God, as, as those who proclaim in God we trust. And so certainly when we have days, as we have seen in the past couple of days, where the most heinous things I could imagine have taken place and people have done the most ungodly of acts of violence and, and destruction. And then we have those who are supposed to be proclaiming peace and, and supposed to be given instructions. Those are supposed to be the guides of the people, the people who say they carry the name of God, yet pray in, a, in the name of a false God. This is a tragedy. And I promise you that what has happened to Samaria and what has happened to Jerusalem will also happen to America if we don't repent and return. And so the encouraging word as we begin this new journey through the book of Micah is to learn from their mistakes and look around and see, are we making the same mistake? Because if we are, we may get the same punishment. But there was a cure for the transgressions. It was called repentance. It was called confession. And it was called turning from the right hand to the left hand and looking unto the author and giver of life, the blesser, the, pros the one who brings prosperity, the one who raises nations up and brings nations down, the one who gives life, the one who takes life, the one who, who uh, is the only one who can say there is no other salvation yet found in God. And so no matter how much of a military we had, no matter how much money we had, no matter how much um, uh, um, prosperity uh, uh, and, and, and worldly wisdom we have, it will not save us. Man cannot save us. God can. And I, this should be an encouragement to us to stop looking to men for our answer and look to God and ask him to please help us to tear down these hard hearts these calloused hearts and make them soft and pliable uh, to his word again, to hear him from his holy mount before he comes down and brings destruction upon us, just as he says, like he did to Samaria and just like it did happen to Jerusalem. And so I pray today that as we begin this new study, as we begin this encouraging work, because this really should be encouraging to us, encouraging that we would do the right thing as we move forward. That is my prayer and starting this new book. And this is where God has led me. So therefore, this is where we're going to go. And so I pray that you'll join me every day as we take a little bit more of this book of Micah and looking at where they were and what they did and did not do and saying, oh Lord, make us wise as we look at this book. You encourage us to live lives that are pleasing unto you. And so I pray you go forth today, mightily in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray that you are encouraged.